For Scottish Archaeology Month Week 2, we would like to examine the results of excavations from the Benahy colony. In the time of the colonists, treasure hunters and antiquarians had their own way of doing things when it came to archaeology. Out they went with picks and spades and started howking in likely spots. Some of them took the trouble to report their findings, but too often their activities left little on record and destroyed evidence on the ground, which might have been useful to future generations equipped with newer and better technology. So today's archaeologists follow a strict protocol which respects the features on the ground, records and reports the findings, and where possible leaves part of the site undisturbed for posterity. State-of-the-art surveying and recording technology comes into play, but the bulk of the work still relies on willing persons, armed with knee pads, a trowel, oh, and maybe access to LiDAR imagery as well. We get tea and lunch breaks too. On many sites nowadays, you will find that the archaeologists from the universities and commercial firms are working alongside students and increasingly community volunteers such as the Baileys of Benahy. Every layer of soil and every part of the structure is carefully recorded by drawings, photographs and so-called context sheets which, when considered together, make it possible to see how the different parts of the site relate to each other and how the site developed and changed over the years. Some of those field workers may have spent time indoors too, digging into the archives for clues which might illuminate the archaeological evidence. There is a rich store of material in the National Records of Scotland on the past map site in the historic environment records of the local authorities and in the archives held by the Scottish universities. Often this provides very precise data relating to the site in question. Of particular note are the historic maps held by the National Library of Scotland which can be viewed online and the holdings of the Special Collections Centre at the University of Aberdeen which has a vast collection of papers relating to landed estates in the northeast of Scotland. So, with this background, how have things gone at Benahy, where investigations commenced under the guidance of the University of Aberdeen and Northlight Heritage? Throughout history, people have depended on the land for their livelihood, and it is the soil that is the key. The peat mosses on Benahy up to five metres deep in places, were probed to gather a pollen record showing the vegetation cover which has developed since the last ice age. On the lower slopes, the natural soil depths are much thinner, except in the valley bottoms. But where the colonists had worked the land, we dug test pits. And these showed how the crofters had enriched the soil in their kale yards to a depth of a foot or more by clearing stones, adding the contents of the kitchen midden, ashes from the fire, organic peat from the hill, and manure from the livestock. Two croft houses, Hillside and Shepherd's Lodge, were selected for excavation. Hillside was one of the more recent houses in the colony, built to a high standard with a range of outbuildings and a cobbled farmyard adjacent. Before any digging began, the complex site was surveyed in detail. The positions, sizes and shapes of each feature were captured and recorded on a detailed plan. In the fields, they had cleared stones to build dry stain dikes and in one case at least, trenches were dug to install field drains, much the same as was happening on the big low ground farms beyond Benahee. Then the attention focused on the house. Quantities of tumbled stones had to be cleared from the interior. The place began to look quite spacious. The soot-stained kitchen fireplace emerged at one end, set in a room with a beaten earth floor and carefully laid granite hearthstones.
We found willow pattern pottery and pieces of a brown teapot of the kind still in use today, and a flower pot that might have stood on the windowsill. A storage area in the centre of the house had pieces of dairyware bowls used for settling milk, so they must have had a cow or at least a goat. This fragment of a china sheep ornament was probably discarded by a wealthy household somewhere in the outside world, and no doubt cherished in its new home. Once the finds have been recorded on the appropriate context sheet, they can be cleaned and examined. Shepherd's Lodge was of more basic construction, looking out over extensive fields of its own. We know from the records in 1851, 11 members of the Little John household lived here, and in due course, Hugh Little John may have occupied an adjacent building with his family. Beneath the tumbled stones in the interior of the main house, pieces of broken pottery were found, from tableware that would have graced any mealtime. The fireplace and hearthstones are visible, but curiously, very little of the floor could be found. It is possible that the building had been used as a livestock shelter when the people had gone, and that in due course the earthen floor would have been broken up and carted away with the manure. Outside, the well survives and laurels, gin and holly around the edges of the kale yard were almost certainly planted by the family. With the help of the archaeological finds and the official records, it is not difficult to imagine what life was like for the colonists, and even to construct digital models of the colony like the one above, as we'll see in the next part of our journey.